everyone. So welcome back to another episode of the Hello Spring podcast. I hope you're all doing well because in today's episode, we're going to be having a very special guest that I know for a fact you're all going to love. We did not have an episode last week, so I thought why not do something extra special and make the episode a little bit longer for you all to listen to, to make up for lost times. So we are going to be having my good friend Star Winksy on the podcast. You may know her as Starlight Sims from YouTube back in the day, where she had a Sims 3 Generations and Seasons Let's Play called the Logan Family. And it was her iconic family that everyone loved and adored, and I still love them to this day, 100%. But she is now Star Winksy, and she is a variety Twitch streamer where she makes a variety of content around The Sims 2, The Sims 3, and other variety games such like Until Dawn, Little Hope, and so many other games that I know for a fact you're all going to love. And so if you all stick around in this episode, all of the links will be in the show notes below to our channels and all that you need to know about her. But anyway, let's go ahead and hop into today's episode. Um, I wanted to start off the, the episode with saying thank you so much, Whitney, which I appreciate it so much for you being on my podcast. Like I'm so excited because I consider you as like an OG Sims YouTuber and like I feel like the people need to know yours at the story, like how you started, where you are at now and all the above. Because personally, we love Sims. We love YouTube. We love everything. So thank you again for uh, being on my podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you for asking me and having me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I want to ask you, how have you been doing today? Pretty good. I've mostly just been um, preparing myself for this. Like <laughs> been a little anxious because that's just how we are but mm -hmm. I'm excited overall like more than anything <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited as well so would you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself a little little spiel oh boy uh okay so my name is well my username is Starwinksy mm -hmm. um but I go by my real name is Whitney pretty much everybody just calls me Wit because that's like my nickname and that's just how I feel comfortable when people call me wit and it's like become like a close-knit thing with my community and everything so feel free to call me wit and yeah I started making let's plays like on YouTube seven years ago which oh is gosh. crazy it's been that long but yeah January of 2014 so long time but um mainly been focused on Twitch in the last few years and we play a lot of Sims 2, Sims 3, check out new stuff with the Sims 4 from time to time sometimes we play community games we play animal crossing and um mario kart and jackbox and sometimes we play a random horror game <laughs> so mm -hmm. i like to spice it up but definitely still sims at my core i probably always will be so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that's really cool i like how you said that you kind of dibble and dabble to pretty much anything and everything, like storytelling games. I know mm -hmm. you have played uh, Detroit Become Human and like Little Hope. Yes. And I'm yes. like, oh my gosh, I love those Detroit Become games. Human is probably, probably the most beautiful game I've ever played in my life, both in oh, the yeah. story and the visuals. Like it was, it's just stunning. And that game actually really made me f have this newfound love of story games like now mm -hmm. i want to play now i want to broaden my horizons even more and play even more games because of the stories and like that game just just changed me a lot honestly it's oh it's, it's seriously oh. one of my favorite games of all time now when i tell you i highly recommend playing the walking dead i don't know if you're like interested in like zombies and stuff but like the walking dead it's such more than that the walking dead franchise like video game from telltale games is hands down one of the best story driven games i've ever played in my entire life i've played through those games multiple times at least four or five times for like different endings and different choices i've, I've made and it made me feel more connected to the characters as if they were real and I always like I always cry because they feel like real people, even though they aren't. It just makes me excited and happy to know that they are moving on to a better life or trying out new things that they haven't done before after the whole world ending and everything. And then right. another game is Life is Strange. Yes, I was just going to say that, too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I So I actually watched The Walking Dead show for like a very mm -hmm. long time. I don't really I'm not really like 
into it anymore, but I was for a long time and I haven't actually played the Walking Dead games myself, but I have seen, um, I think I see, saw a streamer play it like the first one, the first Walking Dead game. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would still love to go through and play those myself. And I like, I still have the Wolf Among Us on my computer, but never played oh, it. Yeah. Like, and I, I really want to play because Life is Strange 3 is coming out this year. Mm-hmm. So, and I never played one or two. So I kind of want to do that as well. So maybe I'll be able to play all three eventually, hopefully, because that's definitely at the top of my list right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes when to story I, games. Yeah. When I tell you, those are some really good heavy hitter games for storytelling, especially with the all the episodes and how much, um, like connected each character is and like the choices you make in one episode kind of affects the next episode or after like you finish that season it carries on to the next season and after and so and so forth and it's so interesting on how these video games tie in so much realness into a, such a little character you know yeah like it's like like coming back to detroit become human like yeah that game has has i don't know like a hundred probably different endings like it takes is so like you can impact that game so much there are so many different choices and ways that it could go yeah and it's and then it has like that just the overall story of and how you can compare the way that androids are being treated and discriminated mm-hmm. against like real life such oh my gosh i could go on like it's just beautiful but yeah it, it's crazy <laughs> like, I, yes my favorite one was Kara, and I think Marcus mm-hmm. was that his name? Yeah, Marcus. He was the one. He's Jesse Williams. Uh, yeah, he's the yeah. one. He was. He was like leading the resistance, basically. Like he was yeah. the one leading them toward yeah toward freedom. And then Kara, of course, she had like the motherly role, which I really mm-hmm. bonded to and related to. And I broke. I became a felon for that little girl. I <laughs> I stole everything. I took every I took I didn't care. I was like as long as she's safe, that's what matters. Oh my gosh. I think yes. that's what I did too. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, Ralph, I mean, however, you know, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> right. Ralph kind of scared me when he was talking in the third person i got horror from like ralph feels not safe ralph feels scared oh, ralph yeah, doesn't yeah, want to yeah, be yeah. in trouble i'm like no get away from me get away from me with that creepy smile back yeah. away stranger, and the thing danger. is like i saw i saw someone have him but i don't think i even had him in my playthrough because hmm. i literally like robbed a store so i could stay at a hotel and oh i yeah. robbed the store and, and stole clothes like i'm i'm t- i became a full-on felon just so this girl would be safe but yeah oh my gosh i lived in that in that weird abandoned house where that <laughs> fence was that's what i yeah, lived. I was too scared i was too scared <laughs> i didn't understand i i was afraid of getting caught and getting arrested and then car gets disenabled and and then the little girl just goes away I'm like well, right did you finish the game though <laughs> i did finish it yes oh I don't know how you, I've, I didn't, I need to go watch the VOD back, but like it was months ago, but the way it ended for me, I was beyond blown away that the little girl was an android the entire time. Yes. Like spoiler alert, but yes. yes. <laughs> I, I had a feeling because I, I, mean, I had seen someone else play it, but I didn't remember much from it, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I came to this, there was this part fairly early on where, again, spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, where Kara and Alice are hiding in a house. Mm-hmm. Um, I think her name was Rose, Rose's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she was tucking Alice into bed and Alice said something. What did she say? She said, why don't they like us to Kara? Oh. And that was kind of a ding, ding, ding moment for me. I was like, wait a minute. Wait, why would, Why is she wording it that way? And yeah. then there was another time where she was like, I just want to be like other girls, which of course, like coming from the perspective, like I was a little girl once and I felt those feelings, but I don't know. There was in a, in a whole game about androids. I'm like, I wonder if she really like, I wonder if she's an android. And so when that happened, I was like, oh my God, I was right. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. like I was like thinking like oh my gosh, it all makes sense because the other android, the the big strong one, I was like he takes Luther. care of yes. yeah he takes care of him so well like it's his mm-hmm. own because they are the same kind and it's crazy right yeah I don't know. oh it's so good wild. so good 
Oh, man. I just love that game so much. It's I I really love storytelling, and I know that you do too. And it's like when mm. you play other story driven games that are not The Sims, it just makes your love of storytelling grow even more. Yeah, it really does. And like I, that's the game I recommend to everyone. Like like all my friends who play The Sims, I'm like, okay, but you should play Detroit Become Human. Like, yeah, I promise. If you love stories, like this game is it's the right. game. Like, yes, it's so good, hands down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. So I asked all my guests this who are who appear on my podcast. What was your first impression of me? <laughs> I honestly don't know if I can remember because I've known you forever. Like right. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I've known you since like the beginning. Like I'm oh gosh. I swear. I'm just gonna interview you. How long have you been doing <laughs> these? <laughs> How long have you been doing YouTube? Because I feel like I've seriously known you since I started practically. Well, I started doing YouTube like around 2011, but like I had like a separate YouTube Before channel. Before me. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was making YouTube videos in high school. It was all about Sims though. I was making like Sims 2 machinima videos for like four years of high school. They made me so happy. Uh, however, in high school, I was completely depressed. Um, so I made very sad mm. type machinima videos and like meeps. Yep. I don't know if you do, do you know what meeps are? I don't know. Well they're like um <laughs> Not entirely where, sure. they're like music videos. They're called multi-editor projects where you have like these group of different um Sims 2 directors make a short clip of a piece of a song, and then the host or whatever of the person who made the project puts all the clips together with the song uh-huh. that they had and with people to watch. I've made multiple multiple of them. I even like what was crazy back then is that I think it was like 2013, 2014, like around that time when I was like actually ending that channel because I was just, I'm done because it was too much work. But I had this intention of like every the start of every year, I would do like this 40 minute multi-editor project where I would have 40 individual people film like different clips of a piece of a song and then it would put everything together and then upload to YouTube for people to watch. And it was a lot of work, but it was worth yeah. it. Um, but the YouTube channel is still up there. It was called Saga World Productions. Wow. So, I, wow. yeah. So I've been making videos for <laughs> for about a decade now, all about The That's Sims. That's wild. Wow. Else. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. But I didn't kind of like get into like uh, gameplay and like using my voice because I never actually talked in any of my videos at all until like 2014 when The Sims 4 first came out. And I was like, I want to get into um, Let's Plays and using my voice and showing my face and everything and do that. So I started a brand new channel called Spring Sims. And here we are today, seven (laughs) years into the future and still going at it. Yeah, like I think my first impression was probably just like my impression of you now, which is just like how nice you are. Like you're mm-hmm. a very kind person, and that just like I don't know, you just you radiate that energy, <laughs> and like you're always you were always nice, and you're always you're I think you were always like commenting on people's videos about how good they like you were just very oh, nice yeah. and like outgoing. At least it felt that way, like online and stuff. Like you felt so mm-hmm. outgoing, and like yeah, you were just so sweet and like nice to me and stuff and oh. I don't know I really I really liked you and I, I still do I still do Thank you. <laughs> it's like the thing is like I do come across very nice and bubbly and happy which I am in real life but like I'm an <laughs> introvert person like I don't really I go feel that lot. um I, I literally don't leave my house you know <laughs> I don't leave my house really. at all mm-hmm. um but like I I do try to make sure that people feel like welcome and happy and excited because I don't know. I just I just like watching YouTube and I've been doing YouTube for so long that I know what it's like, kind of, that when you have like negative comments on your YouTube videos, it kind of brings you down a little bit. So I thought, why not sprinkle in some positivity in people's YouTube videos and tell them what I like about it? Like I would watch the entire video so I can kind of get a full understanding. And I still do that to this day. I don't comment as much, but I just watch it and like it. But it's like positivity goes a long way honestly it does and like that's honestly i don't want to say that's one of the biggest reasons i don't really do youtube much anymore but it's probably Mm -hmm. like a contributing factor is because like for a while it was like all i got was hate comments like because it feels Mm -hmm. like like the more growth you have the more haters you have (laughs) because like the more people find you and then the more trolls find you and then 
it, it becomes like I had to at one point I actually had the YouTube app on my phone and got notifications like oh, no. had them turned on. Like, who was I? No, that was a bad idea. Don't do that. No, 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 <laughs> um, no. So, no, no. So that really, it really affected me mentally. And it got to a point where like, it almost felt like I was making videos that other people wanted more than what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think it just needs to be a healthy balance. But I, I read way too much into those negative comments. I'm the first one to admit it. Like, oh my, I, I, I'll shrug it off in the moment. Like, and I'll be like, oh, this doesn't bother me, whatever. They're just a troll. But deep down, it really bothers me. <laughs> it really mm -hmm. bothered me. And, you know, like, we're all human. And I think there is such a disconnect with being online because, especially on YouTube, I really didn't show my face for a very long time. It was just my voice. Mm -hmm. So, so I think, I think people kind of disconnect you from the video. Like, they just yeah. see a video. And so they comment and not realizing like, they know you're behind the screen, but I don't know. It's just different. There's definitely a disconnect there where people don't really yeah, definitely. care as much. <laughs> like, they wouldn't say this stuff to your face, but they'll definitely say it online. Oh yeah. So, yeah. The positivity, like you talked about, it, it truly is life-changing. Like, it, it's, it makes all the difference. Like, one nice comment can literally make my entire day. Yeah. And Same. one bad one can ruin my day. So like, oh. your comments truly matter, like always. <laughs> yeah, because like, honestly, I don't think I've ever gotten hate comments. I don't think so. I don't know. Now that I think I have no idea if I've gotten hate comments, I probably have. Probably just delete them because I'm like, uh-uh, get out of my way. I'm not going to let you ruin my delete day. Delete them. Goodbye. I just delete them now. But yeah. at the time, I, I would I would actually try to like not argue with them back, but I would try to like... <laughs> I don't know. I had this feeling like I had to like make people like me and I've been oh working on gosh. that, but yeah. I, I really do. I want everyone to like me and I want to be seen as like a good or likable person. Yeah. <laughs> and so when someone doesn't like you and you're like, why, why don't you like me? What can oh I change gosh. about myself to make you like me? And me. that was how I kind of was back then. And I mean, I've really been working on that, you know, it's been seven years, so I've definitely changed, but that yeah. was really how I was and I was ready to change my entire personality online just to like make people happy like it's so crazy how much <laughs> how that stuff can affect you yeah definitely because I <laughs> I've been told I was a people pleaser and I know I was mm -hmm. back then now thinking about it, I'm like okay yeah I gotta change that mindset like mm -mm. if people don't like me I don't care goodbye right. I'm moving on with my life <laughs> right um, <laughs> but I think my um first impression of you was um I think when I when I first found your channel was around like when I was watching The Sims 3 on YouTube it was your Logan family and oh my gosh ah. <sighs> I I love yes. generations and seasons I will always forever love those two expansion packs but I feel mm -hmm. like with your YouTube channel you made it more like personal and more like real which made me kind of more connected to you as a creator but also like as the family was growing like I want them to be real so bad <laughs> but no yeah. I think that was like my first impression of you oh yeah it was so sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's about to be the end of May like next week or so but we're five months in and it's kind of crazy that we're thinking like five months in almost six months in of the like the new year. I know. It's like, really flown by. Like, it's It really well. has. Like, I don't understand <laughs> the sense of time or, you know, weather anymore because it's just all over the place. Like, it makes mm -hmm. no sense. But I was going to say, um, where things are now, would you say that things have gotten better since the beginning of the year? Because the beginning of the year was, like, weird. New president and all. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> It's been so long. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think definitely I, I do think that I'm, I do think that things are better generally now than they were like at the beginning of the year, because I mean, for so many reasons, like back in January ish, I think I was having a bout of like some depression or seasonal depression or something. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure, but I was definitely just not myself. And I just, I felt very down and I really wasn't streaming as much. And it was, I don't know. I honestly think that I live in a very cold 
weather state. And so when it's winter, it's just cloudy every day. And eventually oh, your yeah. brain is just like cloudy too. And you're just mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, but then once spring came and the sunshine came, like I started feeling a lot better. And so in that way, I definitely am feeling better from earlier this year. And yeah, I've also had like other kind of, I guess, <laughs> revelations <laughs> since the beginning of the year. Um, like uh, my health, for example, like I had all these symptoms and I was finally diagnosed with them fairly recently. Like I actually have a diagnosis now and like I have, mm-hmm. so there are things that are, that have definitely moved in like in that way. And then like you said, like the president, you know, yeah. <laughs> all that kind I of c- stuff. <laughs> I couldn't remember anything after like what happened towards the UV, like end of December to like January. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's going on? And just went fast forward to May. I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah, I know. It was, it's, it seriously feels like January or February was just... a week ago. <laughs> really, yeah. it really does. Like time has flown and it's probably because like, we're also, you know, we're all still kind of not going out as much and yeah, like, it's That's just, true. time has just flown by and yeah, it's wild that it's already been like this year's already half over. It's weird. Oh gosh. I, I just turned 25. I'm like, I'm not ready to be 26 and like. Like, I don't know, eight months in time. So, no. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be 29. I'm going to be 29 this summer. Like, oh my. I'm not not ready. My last year of my 20s, I'm not ready. (laughs) Go strong. You got this. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I think, like, what kind of kept me going throughout this entire year, uh, like, what the the best thing I've been been doing is like, it's just streaming and like, kind of getting my, all my ducks in a row because I'm, I always, I'm like this planner. I've always like this, been this planner all, all my life where if I'm going to do something in like five years time, I need to like have these set things in place or like do these certain things to get to where I need to be. So like now that I'm 25, I, and like around like January, February ish before I turned 25, I was like, I want to have like my five year plan set in stone or like have my five year plan of what I want to do. And before I'm 30. So I was like, I need to do all these things and plan ahead and stream and record these videos, do my podcast. Like that was like my main thing. Start the mm-hmm. podcast and then all things will be fine later on. And so far it, it has been besides like the mental depression and anxiety and all. But right, I think that uh, streaming has helped so much. And I think you can agree as well because... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's been like streaming has been such a big distraction for me, especially with the past year, like 2020 and now 2021. Like it's just been a lot for everyone. And and so I think that people have been such a good distraction, like streaming and hanging out with my community has really been a lifesaver for me, like within the past couple of years and just such a good distraction. And um, like, it's funny because I always go into content creation of any kind with this mindset of being a happy distraction for other Mm -hmm. people. I really like that makes me feel very fulfilled inside to be a distraction for others. If they have things going on in their lives, like even distracting them for a few minutes of a day would be fine for me. Like as long as I make them smile or something like that's what I want. And so it's kind of like the tables have turned and now my community (laughs) is what's distracting me from things going on so it's like very like very much a two-way street and it's come full circle in that way which is kind of neat (laughs) yeah yeah, definitely definitely streaming has been a very big part of why I think I am also feeling better than I was in January because I wasn't streaming in January Mm because I didn't feel great mentally so then I would cancel stream but then I'd feel even worse for canceling stream like it's just (laughs) an endless cycle that's me (laughs) It I think really it's, is. It's so weird because like when I think like like around like 2013, 2012, it's like towards the end of 2012, I feel like. And like onward, I feel like that with people who do like YouTube and like Twitch, don't go into the minds of thinking, oh, it's gonna be like my quote unquote full-time career and I'm gonna Never. do all these different things like <laughs> We're not going to make all this money. No, we just go into it as a hobby. But then, like, I think the more that we have done it for so long, we think a certain way. Like, we always have to be, like, 
on and recording mm-hmm. and live streaming, have all like this bubbly personality or whatever our yep. personality might be online. <laughs> That if we take a day off or a week off or don't stream for as long as we usually do, we always feel so bad. And it's like, it's still like that sometimes, but I think 2020, I personally personally think just looking at the internet and streams in general on YouTube, I think personally, a lot of people have been more okay with the fact that it's okay to take a break. It's okay to like take your mind away from like social media and recording. Like we don't always have to be on because if you're always on, it's like whenever, when are you going to be off, you know? Right. And so like when I started YouTube, I really, truly, I actually, what's funny is I almost didn't upload my first video. (gasps) I I almost didn't. I, I, I was really bored one day. Okay. I was very lonely and I was like, you know what? I'm home by myself. I'm just going to, record myself playing a game because I saw other people doing it and it Mm -hmm. looked fun. So I was just going to do it for fun, like just for myself. I don't know. So that's what I did, but I recorded it as if it were a let's play just because that's what I saw on YouTube. So yeah, I I recorded this whole video and I really wasn't going to upload it. But then something at the very last minute, I was like, you know what, let's just do it. So I uploaded it. And the rest is history. But I definitely did not go into it with the mindset of this is going to be my career. And I I didn't even know that you could make money through YouTube. Like, yeah, I knew like I I knew that really big YouTubers like, you know, at the time people like like Bethany Moda or like big people yeah. back then. But I figured it was like just sponsorships or mm-hmm. that they had a management team that paid them. I didn't know anything. So I had no idea that like I could make money through ad revenue or anything like that. So I think I got partnered on YouTube like a few months in because at the time partnerships were a lot different. Like I think I had a hundred subs and got partnered. Things were so different in 2014. Um, It really was. Yeah. (laughs) And so I got partnered because all of my friends were getting partnered and I was like well if they're doing it I might as well do it too and like I don't know it just became like I guess I'll do this why not make money from a hobby now right and so so I did that and then after generations happened and things started kind of picking up faster and faster I really did fall into that mindset of oh my gosh I need to record all the time I need to be on all the time I can't take a break because now my family is actually depending on this income and like it added so much stress that I had never, ever gone into it thinking like I I really didn't go into it thinking about making money. And mm-hmm. pretty soon it actually honestly became all it like not all it was, but a big part of it was, OK, but I, I need I need to make sure that I make enough money this month. So I need to upload this many times. And it got like I got very obsessive over it. Like I mm-hmm. I really it became like an analytics game. Like it oh my really. Gosh, yes. And now, of course, you open YouTube now and the first thing, it it just like punches you in the face with your analytics and it's like, whoa. (laughs) It's like, you're doing bad. No one's watching you. It's like, it's like, you you suck. You open YouTube and it's like, you suck. (laughs) It's like, it's what it feels like when you, especially when you're in a bad mental place as it is, like YouTube really just kind of fueled that for me. So that's why I took kind of a step back. But, but for a long time, that's, that's how I felt. Like I couldn't take breaks and everything. And with Twitch, I do feel like it's somewhat the same. Like I don't like taking breaks, but not so much because of the like the money or anything. But it's more mm-hmm. of like I don't want to let people down because what if they had a really bad day? Like what if someone in my community had a bad day and yeah. they're depending on, you know, they're looking forward to my stream to make them feel better. And that's mm-hmm. kind of the pressure I put on myself because my community is not like that at all. Like they're very, they're the oh, ones yeah. yelling at me to self-care. Like they yell at me to cancel stream. <laughs> like they, like, they like, like make stop. me. <laughs> don't stream. I don't want to yeah. see it. Take a break. Right. Exactly. Seriously. And so they'll like yell at me to take breaks and um, which I'm so grateful for them. So I'm definitely in a place now where I'm not. I honestly don't even really check my Twitch analytics and it's been a lot better for me than YouTube because I feel like YouTube, it's almost like unavoidable. (laughs) You can't even open it, you know? It's like if you want to upload a video, you're in the dashboard, you see everything. Yes, exactly. So it's like, I don't want to (laughs) upload. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And and like, I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at now. And that's also another reason why I've just been focusing on Twitch because Mm -hmm. YouTube, it's just, it really became too much of a numbers game for me. And at that point, 
you know, it was just not as fun for me anymore. Mm -hmm. Whereas Twitch, it's like I get to hang out with people in real time. And it's just, I don't know. It's just such a different vibe than YouTube. Oh, I get what I understand what you mean, because I, I was also feeling that way as well, where I was I miss kind of getting that real time, genuine like connection to people because with YouTube comments, it always felt like one sided where you're not really kind of having that connection with someone where they say, oh, I would love your videos and what they think about the video. But then you come back and you and say, like, thank you. And then the conversation yeah. ends mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and that's it. You know, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So it's like streaming is like what made it more fun for me to like continue to create content because of the interaction I was getting and like what they were, what, what, what they were liking, but also like what was I liking and how we all could collaborate together as a community. Yeah. And I like with YouTube comments, like, like you said, someone comments what they liked or didn't like about a video and you respond and then that's kind of it and a conversation. And yeah. also with YouTube comments, it's usually just all about your content. That's all the, that's really all the comments are is like just talking about your content, and which makes sense. Little, but yeah, but with Twitch, it's so much more in depth than just what you're playing or what you're doing. Like, I feel like Twitch is the place to be, at least for, for me and my point of view, like, yeah. It's not so much about the content. It's about the relationship with the streamer and the community. And like, I know more about my community because of Twitch yes. than I ever would have known on YouTube. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because we, we yeah. talk about our lives in real time on Twitch. And now I know so many things about them as well. Like more, like, it's not just one sided. Like, yeah, they comment on what I'm doing or whatever. But I and be able to ask them about their day and we have a full on conversation. And now I exactly. know where they like, so like all these things about them now. And so that's why I really, that's why I just love Twitch so much. <laughs> I love Twitch so much because of that, because I at first started streaming on like YouTube for like maybe one stream a month. I only did like two streams, granted. But then after I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. Everyone is like, it, the weird part is that, I didn't like the fact that people knew who I was when I was streaming. So I'm like, I don't want anyone to know me. So I moved over to Twitch to streaming. Granted, people knew who I was and I didn't care, but it was smaller. Whereas back then it was like 8,000 people knowing who I was. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I don't want that. No, no, no. So I'm just going to- I streamed once on YouTube. That was my very first stream I ever did was YouTube. Mm-hmm. And this was in like 2017-ish, probably. Uh-huh. And it was the, the first stream I ever did. And it was the only stream I ever did on YouTube. <laughs> and it, it was very overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for my first stream, and it was just a lot. And I don't know. And there was also a lot of like, where's this Let's Play? Where's this video? And exactly. Um, where I was on Twitch, it's like, how was your day? How's your cat? Oh my God, show us your cat. You know, like it's like, it's just more fun, spontaneous things than just where's the content? Where's the content? Where's the content? And, and also, like you said, it is a smaller Twitch in general. It's always like a smaller community than your YouTube community. Like it's, that's just exactly how it kind of is discoverability or something, but it's, it's just a smaller space. And so that really comforted me when I moved over to Twitch because, um, you know, it was smaller, but also, most of the people talking weren't asking like, where's this, where's that? They just wanted to talk to me and I just wanted to get to know them. And it just, Twitch, Twitch is just, it will always be my favorite platform. Like it just, I really yeah. think at least right now, it, it that's it just how it is. <laughs> yeah. I like how it's growing and changing. I see that they're also adding in the trans tag, which is so yeah, cool. I think they're adding like 150 tags or something yeah. like that. It's so wild. I mean, Twitch, just like any platform, you know, you have to hold them accountable and make yeah. like, just like any business or, or, or company, like you want to hold them accountable and they definitely need work. Like they need to, you know, put in more effort in certain areas. But when they finally do, you also want to applaud that, you know, like, exactly. okay, it shouldn't have taken you this long, but like, good job, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, that's very, very exciting because diversity yeah. and being inclusive is probably the most important thing yeah. <laughs> on any it, platform, you know? Exactly. With the Sims, like the Sims 4 was yes. like, we had basic skin tones that were a little bit ashy, not great. But then seven years right. later, we finally get it. So 
couldn't take shouldn't take that long, but we finally got what we deserve and what we needed for so long for like true representation and everything. Right. And like I yeah, because like with with The Sims 4 too, it's like it's definitely like I think out of all the Sims games, I think The Sims 4 is the best with diversity. Oh like, yeah. Oh, for definitely. sure. Like like even in like the Sim like the Sims 2, as much as like I love I love The Sims 2. You know, you know. Same, same. I, I love Sims 2. My she's my favorite, but but Four skin tones, four, four yes. skin tones, oh, you know, no. and, and, oh my God, don't even get me started on like the bigger body. It's <laughs> like, literally, it just gives your Sims a bigger butt and that's it. Like, it's not, it's, oh no. my gosh. And the Sims 3 got better with the body. The yeah. skin tones really definitely needed more <laughs> in the hairs oh. and stuff. Definitely needed more. So oh, Sims yeah. 4 is definitely the reigning king when it comes to diversity and yeah. like the different body types and like just everything that they're doing. So I'm definitely glad that they updated the skin tones and they're, they're still working on their hairs and stuff. Like they're still trying to be better because the community is also holding them accountable and, exactly. and pushing for this stuff. And yeah. Cause like back then what we had back then the Sims more specifically the Sims two, I feel like 2004 to 2008, Eight-ish was just would not be acceptable in 2021 at all with the I guess no. <laughs> the fashion type no turn on and turns off no absolutely like the weird part what kind of got me was like why was a turn off fatness and like other stuff yeah. like I don't understand I can understand stink that's understandable because people who yes. smell it's like uh uh-uh, uh take a shower get away right. from me um, <laughs> right that's my turn off <laughs> I like, was a sim. <laughs> Every sim I had was like, yeah, um, turn off, stink, everything else. Um, turn on, hardworking, great. But you smell, get away from me. <laughs> yeah, I really liked the turn ons that were like traits, like if they were yeah. or skills, like if they were a good cook, like that made sense. Like that, mm-hmm. you know, if they had a good job, stuff like that. If they were logical and all those different things. But when it came to like the visuals, oh, like, yeah. Oh gosh. And like I remember I was playing, I can't remember who it was, but I was playing one sim and they had two turn-ons and they were fitness and fatness. And I was like, how does that okay? Well. <laughs> I just and was like, I don't know. It's just it was definitely a different time. And I would say probably a more shallow time. Oh back yeah. in like the early two thousands for sure. Like it was a very different it was just a very different time. And yeah, those things would not fly today and like only having four skin tone options oh no and no 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 <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i think what that was my be... fa- i think my favorite though about the sims 2 which i was going to do a segue of that anyway <laughs> <laughs> i think the one thing i did like about the sims 2 was that it was so diverse with the interactions and the the autonomy of everything of yeah. it felt like real life whereas like with sims 4 it it kind of is like that, but not really. It's more like a sandboxy type of game where you are, you can control literally anything and everything besides the pets. But it's like if you are a brand new player to the Sims franchise or like you played Sims from like the beginning, but then like skip two and three and just forgot about it. But you want to kind of get back into it. The Sims 4 is the definitely reigning king, as you said, to start with anything about the Sims. Like the OG Sims, the the Goth family, the Lotharios, Calientes, the land grabs, even though their storyline makes literally no sense. It's like where you should start and then kind of go back if you want it to. Yeah. I like like if you're just now getting into the Sims, then you know, Sims 4 might be a good way to start because yeah. I also feel like it's a lot simpler in certain ways. Like it's very broad in the important diverse ways, but it's mm-hmm. also very simple in its gameplay and the way that it's like, their needs like 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 if you yeah. play the sims 2 like you're very like your very first thing right now is like the sims 2 and you hop into it you're like why are they dying so quickly <laughs> yeah it's like their needs but like it, i mean it all comes with practice and like realizing there's aspiration benefits you can use to make their yeah. needs slower and like different tricks that you learn i've been playing this game for 17 years so obviously i know like a lot of things about it i still don't know everything about it but same um but it's definitely a learning curve with the older games, especially in like Sims 3, you know, like that's another one that it's a lot more complex. And so in the, in its gameplay, that's a whole which is good, park. but I think it could be a little overwhelming for people as well, depending yeah. on if it's their very first Sims game and they just 
<laughs> are struggling off the bat or something. Especially um, with building. Yeah, if you especially if you want to get into building Sims 4. Yeah. Definitely. I think would be easier. Uh I'm not good at it, but <laughs> but if if people want to get into building, I think Sims 4 definitely makes it probably easier for you. Mhm. I don't know, the Sims has definitely has shown a lot of progression over time. Um, Mm -hmm. since like the sims one like what was weird you go from sims one with with literally two skin tones and three h stages and a 45 degree angle rotation i think that's what it was it was a weird angle and then just like the the gameplay and everything and the objects like i was not allowed to play hot date whatsoever so i never played it until like i was 22 oh my god so i'm like now i know why i wasn't allowed to play it that game that expansion was wild but when it was like The Sims 1 to The Sims 2 was like a whole like completely different game. 360, the autonomy, mm-hmm. everything, two extra skin tones and more hairstyles and more age stages. And it made it, it made it feel like a family. And I think that's what I love about The Sims 2 the most. Yeah. And that's why I go the back family. to it. Yeah. The memory The family system. play is just, uh, it's just superior. The, the, oh. the. The family play. And that's because I started playing The Sims when I was probably like 10-ish. Mm-hmm. And my mom got me, she got The Sims 1 complete collection. Okay. And yeah. and so, and she played it a lot. Like she played it all the time. Oh and so, so we would both play it. And so she was okay with me, with me playing. Like she would let me play like Hot Date and all that, all that stuff. Oh my gosh. Um, even though I was like 11. But like she, she knew she knew what I could handle. Like, so she knew that, like, I knew, I know where babies come from. I mean, I'm, I can play it. It's okay. I didn't <laughs> know so, at the time. <laughs> yeah. So, so she was okay with it. But, um, but definitely, but then, like, literally the next year, Sims 2 came out. So I was just turning 12. And oh my gosh, it was everything. That's when my gen- genuine obsession <laughs> began. My, yes. my, true love of the sims 2 came out and it, it's so true like how how much of a difference between the sims 1 and the sims 2 like the sims 2 for one you had you could go in with all these different angles you could zoom in really close you had all these different yeah. like camera options you could you know create a sim was so much more in depth it was ridiculous oh, <laughs> like all of all of it and like the the neighborhoods just Oh, it was oh just so God. good. And, and, and the life stages is really what I think made the biggest difference. Like they could actually try for baby, be pregnant, have the baby. Mm-hmm. And, and then the baby was like, you could like bathe them in the sink and like all these little interactions. And that was my favorite it, thing. It was so cute. And, oh, and then they had all these wants to like spend time with their, their wants and fears. Oh my gosh. And they, yeah. you know, they wanted you had family sims and they wanted like i always made family sims i was pretty boring back then i only made family sims and they, they always just wanted to like you know teach their taught the toddler life stage you know that was when that started and so they you could teach them to walk and talk and all this different stuff and oh my gosh and then the children and then the teens could sneak out and get acting like they, oh. it was just such such a different like it was just it's just wild how different the sims 2 was from the sims 1 like it was truly a step up in pretty much every single way like it, oh 100 arguably like <laughs> it really was and um and the sims 3 was also like a step up in a lot of different ways but yeah. i still i still <laughs> yeah but like the sims 2 is still like, like the tier. little details the little yeah. autonomous things is like, what makes that game what I tell people all the time, because a lot of people, I feel old when I always say it, because some people haven't played The Sims 2 or like haven't even seen the game, but it's they like... They weren't even like alive like yeah. <laughs> when it was out. It's yeah. like, I'm sorry, but I've been playing this game for so long that you make me feel old. Yeah. But like the interaction, what makes me so happy the most is like, if a kid is at home and the parent comes back home from work, the kid will literally stop what they're doing to go run to their parent and give them a hug. And I think that only happens when they have a good relationship, I think, or just happens just in general. Possibly. Usually for me, it's always like a happy relationship. But then if the kid is at 
comes home from school and the parents at home and the kid gets like an A on the report card, they'll look at it, jump up it down, and then literally mm-hmm. run to that like they run to their parent. parents to show them. Yeah. Yes. And then they congratulate them. Like that stuff is so like amazing. And then they can get um fixer upper cars, you can fix them up, you can get a car mm-hmm. alarm installed, you could drive off. And it's like you can drive to school, walk to school. It's like and the, the school and the buses me- come and pick them up and they can yeah. go to private school if you invite the headmaster. Like that one's uh, hard. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, I, I think I've, well, I don't know. I've, I've succeeded the last couple of times I've tried it, but it was definitely yeah. a struggle for me before. Like I was always failing at that, but I still am really bad at having parties for some reason. They're always just kind of bad, but. <laughs> I just feed them spaghetti and a hot tub and then, and they're, then they're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> And some music maybe, um, but yeah. So so yeah, I just I think the little details and even the ones that aren't family oriented, like even yeah, the little details, like like for example, so if you have a romance sim and they want to like flirt with someone, if you had a really outgoing sim like Don Lothario, try oh, to yeah. flirt with another cool. sim and like charm them using the charm interaction, he would like be all up in their face and he'd be like whispering in their ear and like, Spring like very up. outgoing about how he's flirting. Mm-hmm. But then if you were playing a shy Sim, like Nina Caliente, I think is pretty shy. So oh. but she also likes to flirt. So if you had her flirt, she would be very like demure and like shy about it. Yeah. And she, she wouldn't be all up in their face. Like she would kind of play almost like hard to get in her, like in the way she flirted. And like those little details of those little differences matter so much. Like it, oh, it shows does. their personality in the interactions they're doing. Even though it's the same interaction, they're reacting differently because their personalities are different. And that's just so good. That's, yeah. I'm just, I love the attention to, de- to those kind of details in The Sims too. I mean, no the wonder. personality is really shined. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, no wonder Don Lazario's relationships never worked out. At the beginning, he's, <laughs> I think he's in a relationship with, yeah, he is, with Caitlin Lankert, who's the maid of Daniel Pleasant, and then mm-hmm. also Nina and Dina Caliente, and then Cassandra. Cassandra is, like, getting to the point where she wants to be engaged to Don. I think you also have that interaction where you could get, like, meet her at the altar or leave her at the altar. Yeah. And... <laughs> I had them get engaged when I first, like, started playing again, like, a couple of years ago, like, 2016. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have them have a kid, but make it work out. But no, Donald Dario and his, like, sleazy, weird ways of <laughs> cheating on Cassandra was Nina, Dina, and Caitlin. My save out is so crazy. Like, I have so much history. It's kind of insane. They're all dying off, though, but it's yeah, kind I'm of scared funny. for, like... Because like I have that Uber hood, and that's gonna be every neighborhood. Oh my! Like gosh. it's gonna be so much. I'm scared. <laughs> but like, and that's <laughs> the thing about The Sims Two, is the pre maids. Like, yes. I never, I never play the pre maids in Sims Three or Sims Four. I, I'm always playing like the Sims Two pre maids because their their lore oh, could go so on for much. pages and pages, yes. and like their personalities are so fully fleshed out, and like their memories, and it's just you get immediately attached to the pre-maids in The Sims 2. So I love, I love playing them so much. And, and that's the thing too, is you can play them a million times and always have different outcomes. Exactly. <laughs> like it could always end up different. Like nobody's two saves are going to look exactly the same. Oh no. And I just love that about that game. <laughs> I always say, start with Don Lothario. He's connected to... The Goth family, the Kellyanne yeah. like everyone. Like when you really, <laughs> yeah. really, truly think about it, you're connected with everybody. And it's just like you can go in many different directions. You can go with the Pleasant route. You can go with the Caliente route, the Goth route, or just the Lothario route. You, one way or another, you're going to end up with a kid somewhere down the line. Who really uh, definitely. Knows? It's going to happen at some point, especially if you have mods. Because I, <sighs> I use ACR, that Autonomous Casual Romance. Oh, mod. Yeah, that mod? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so good because, like, they'll autom- autonomously do romantic things with each other. So, like, I'll be doing, I'll be, like, talking to chat, like, while I'm streaming, just talking to chat. And then I look over because I wasn't paying attention and someone's trying for baby. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But, like, it's, oh, my gosh. It, it's It's just so funny. But, like, even without that mod... It, that was like, wild. Chaos, chaos will ensue no matter what. Like it's just that kind of game. 
You know what? It's it's weird because I was streaming The Sims 2, I think, like, last week or so. And when I was playing, I played Strange Town for the first time in a, a long time. And I was with the Grunt family. And I don't know if you know, but the the wife of the Grunt family died or, like, they, she divorced. Yeah. General it was Buzz, like they got divorced and then she And then she, she got died. electrocuted. Yeah. And so General Buzz, I was just playing, talking to chat as usual. And then... There was it was raining and then he got electrocuted by lightning and then I was just chalking. He was I was like, oh, he's smelly and dirty. I'm gonna have to take a, a bath or a shower. I went upstairs. Somehow I sped three without even realizing it. And then he just oh no, up you died. never speed three in The Sims three <laughs> in The Sims two. I, <laughs> I feel I, like every time I speed three in The Sims two, it just ends so badly. It's <laughs> sad so much because happens in such a short time. <laughs> like I sped three so fast. That he died, Grim came and then left, and I didn't see a thing. I saved my game, doing whatever because Sims is crazy. And then my chat was like, "What? Did, like he probably didn't notice." Like, and I'm like, "What do you mean I didn't notice?" And someone clipped it. And Buck comes in the bathroom dancing around his father's grave because uh, there was a stereo nearby, so that was why he was dancing. But I'm like, "Oh my gosh!" Because he was a forgotten child where he was never really pay attention to karma. And then two minutes later, after that. He was really, yeah, yeah, Buck is like, he's like the little, little littlest one, I think. I haven't played yeah. Strange Town too much. I'm actually excited to get into that in my rotations I'm doing, but yes. I, I have, I have plans, but I, <laughs> but like all these families are just, I don't know. They're so in depth, like their backstories, like the fact that he had, you know, he could, yeah. they could have just made him a single dad, whatever, but they made yeah. him have an ex-wife yeah. who he divorced and then she died. Like, they're so yeah. intricate. And like, oh my gosh, don't even get me started on Olive Spectre. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> the amount if of you haven't in her done backyard. anything, go look up Olive Spectre's memories. And <sighs> like early demise was like her fifth husband who just mysteriously died. Like, and yeah. oh my gosh. The, oh, there's so much to these. <laughs> and like the Polynesian just, oh. technician family, like Jenny yes. Smith and all that. Yeah. It's weird because their house is like straight, straight up the white picket fence, 1950s. I love their house. Suburban so home. Much. Green yeah. luscious furniture. Like it, it, it's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Ugh. And then the Grunt family hates aliens. Like, yeah. Like, so like his, so it's, it's like Buzz is raising his sons to hate aliens. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, oh, but maybe we could have like Buck befriend like the little girl or like the you know like in that family and like yeah. there's, there's just so many ways that you could go about making stories yeah. but the stories really tell themselves in that game and and that's the thing like i love telling stories like don't get me wrong like i can i definitely like to set things up but i also like the game to carry the story and follow yeah, through same. with it so that's the thing i like about the sims 2 is if you set up a story it will follow through like it will oh 100 and it will even make its own like it's just such a good game it's just Oh, like I'm I already have plans in my Uberhood of like playing with Brandy Broke and having her get with General Buzz and they become oh like my a whole Brady bunch oh. because I feel like <laughs> Dustin Wait. Dustin and Bo and like all her kids, they <gasps> really need like a father figure. He's I mean, he's pretty strict yeah. and you know, but if they had him as like a father he figure, needs it. but then but then Buzz's kids had the nurturing Brandy Broke. Like it's just I'm like, ooh, we could oh we could make this gosh. work. <laughs> so, because I, like <laughs> like when you think about it, because like there's Dustin and then there's Bo and then the unborn child that yeah. Brandy has. We just had the unborn have... child. We just had the unborn child in last night's stream. And it was oh, a, and good. I have clean templates installed, so it it was a girl. And she looks just uh, like her brothers. And oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just so oh, excited scary. to play them. <laughs> I had straight up boys throughout the entire thing, no matter what I did. All mm -hmm. boys. She has four kids. Four. <laughs> she <laughs> named her, well, Dustin Bo Camden, which was the unborn child that I named. And then she got married again to like some other person, Vincent Hurt. And then I named that kid after Skip. So it's Skip Broke. So after her dead husband <laughs> with another person that she married. <laughs> oh gosh. So it, it's it's definitely a wild 
game where you don't have to do anything because the game does it for you. It's like does itself. Yeah. And it's that's what I love. Like that's how Brandy even met Buzz because I was playing the Grunt family. And since it's an Uber hood, all the worlds are connected. So Brandy like came over with the welcome wagon. And yeah. that's how she met that whole family. And the kids really liked her. And I'm like, ooh, I could we could do something with this, you know? So that's where my ideas come from is from what the game did itself. Like yeah. The game just did that. So now I have all these ideas of what I want to do to tell more story. And like, uh, and like this whole round is so different from anything I've done. Like with the Pleasants, I always yeah. usually have like, like I think I would have Mary Sue and Daniel break up and then the twins yeah. would live with either one of them. Mm-hmm. But this time around, um, Lilith ran away. <laughs> And um, she came back and everyone beat her up. So I decided <laughs> that we were just going to, because Lilith is my favorite Sim in Pleasant View. She, I'm telling you, Lilith is she's where rebel. it's at. She's, she's so underrated and un- misunderstood. And oh, so, she really is. So I had her move out of her house as a teenager. And now she lives mm-hmm. with the oldies, which are her grandparents. Mary Sue's parents. Uh, so now good, good. Lilith is living with her grandparents, which also makes the oldies more fun to play for me. Yeah. So I am i don't know. I just I have all these ideas and like I'm so excited to. And that's the thing. It can be so different every single time you play these pre-made Sims. There's so many ways they can go. Yeah. I mean, I could talk yeah. for hours about, <laughs> about Oh, same. It. It's just, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> Man, I, I want to one day figure out how to make an Uber hood because I find that so much fun where all the worlds are connected because mm-hmm. you have River Blossom Hills, Belladonna Cove, yep. Strangetown, Veronaville, which is, I feel like, I don't know, I forget about that world sometimes because I don't really right. pay attention to the whole Romeo and Juliet because I've read and seen so many different variations of Romeo and Juliet that I'm like, I don't want it in The Sims. Right. And like the thing, like, and so... I've actually been thinking about making a, a video of like how I did the Uber hood. It's actually very simple. And like, I, like Please. I promise. <laughs> so I was thinking about doing that because it really, I just, I love it so much. And that way, like if one neighborhood gets boring to you, they can literally move, move to another town. Like it, it doesn't, you know, and they can like a Sim from strange town can get married to a Sim from Belladonna Cove or whatever. Like a lot more options and chaos can happen. <laughs> um, but And then with Veronaville, that's a world that I definitely overlooked, especially as a kid. I was like, this is boring. I don't care about yeah. Romeo and Juliet. And But <laughs> going back and playing it now, there are so many stories because there are a lot of like bin families with that world. So oh, I placed wait, them all I down. I forgot about those. Yeah. So I placed them all down and most of them are family. They're like either Monty's or Caps. So mm-hmm. I placed them them all down but like even they have backstory like there's one he's like a monty and he has two kids and his wife died in a fire or something and then she and then someone else from the caps died in that same fire so that's why they actually don't like each other there's this like whole big thing and now i want the monty's to like run a restaurant like an italian restaurant or something because they all love food and and i don't know i it's, it's given me so many ideas to play with veronaville and there's so many backstories with veronaville so oh my it's like going back as an adult now and looking into that world. I'm like, wow, this is actually a lot more than just Romeo and Juliet, which is all I yeah. really noticed as a kid. So now it's like, wow, there's actually a lot of depth to this world I didn't notice before. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I could go on and on about The Sims 2 for oh, literally I could too. years. I feel like oh we could gosh. talk about Sims 2 all day, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So with YouTube and The Sims... You were once Starlight Sims and then changed to Star Winksy. Like, why, like, why did you want to change, like, the name? So, yeah. Because so I feel like so back then was, mm-hmm. like, that when you had, like, a YouTube channel back in, like, 2013, it's, like, blank and then Sims. That, that's all it was. And then we, we've ventured off into other things. But, yeah, but why yeah. the change? So, Starlight Sims is dead. But, uh Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> repeat r.i.p but um but yeah so starlight sims i honestly don't even remember how i came up with that name it was it was probably something just totally random that i thought sounded good and um and i played the sims so it just made sense in that time and then but i think especially since i was making 
the transition in like 2019-ish to Twitch, I really, Mm -hmm. I just really felt like it was a new start in my life. And so I kind of felt like I needed, I needed the rebrand, the the name change to really follow through with that. And so, because I didn't just want to be known as like, oh, the Sims player. (laughs) And (laughs) this way I feel like I can do pretty much anything and there's no expectation of why isn't this sims you know and because i don't have that attached to my name anymore and so now it's just i can do what i want without feeling like i need to play the sims or that it's expected of me to play the sims even though i still i still mainly play the sims because like my favorite but i don't feel like there's so much pressure to just play the sim because like if i were to try and play like detroit become human even on youtube i don't think i don't know how well that would go you know whereas like over on twitch you know people are always looking if they're looking in that category then they'll find you so it's like i don't know i just feel like it's easier on twitch to just kind of be whatever you want to be youtube is a lot more specific like like categories like it's yeah, like, like you have like the Sims channel, you have a beauty channel, you have, yeah, you know, like little categories, different categories. And so I just really wanted to change that. And I changed my YouTube too. But at this point, I grew up, I grew such a Sims channel <laughs> that I think it'd be yeah. hard to do anything else. But Twitch is still relatively new to me. Like only a couple of years I've really been streaming consistently on Twitch. So mm-hmm. I feel like I'm able to do more. Um, just of whatever I want to do. That's not just The Sims. That's good. I, I like that mindset. Yeah. And I've been, you know, transitioning to that as well. Because like where I was like, I'm going to do Sims all day, every day. But I feel like I do YouTube and I do Twitch at the same time. I'm going to eventually get burned out. And I don't mm-hmm. want that to happen because I've made this like, quote unquote, career out of it. That I'm like, if I stop, like, I'm nothing or something like that. But you have to constantly like, reinvent yourself to try out new things that will make eventually like make you happy right. and make other people happy where it's like a win-win situation. So I like what I was like, I always give people these ideas. Cause like, if you get burned out of the sim, but you think you can't think of any new ideas, think of other games you've played. Like, I don't know, Detroit become human. You could recreate those characters in the Sims or build their house in the Sims. Like, I think all these new ideas, like if people play Fortnite, but they also have the Sims build a Fortnite house in yeah. the Sims. Yeah. So I'm like, combine two franchises together and see what happens. But I know that's what I've just been trying to do, like to reinvent my uh, myself a lot more by branding in other games into the main game that I really play a lot. Yeah, that is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, I think that's, I say, cool. I think you should do it. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned that your first ever upload was like a Sims 2, like, legacy type of thing but you never like you put on private but the first upload that people see on your channel is your generations and seasons let's play the sims 3 with the logan family Mm -hmm. did you like ever expect it to be big impact on people's life um at the beginning to where you are now i literally I, i mean okay so i started the logans when i was like three months into my channel and mm-hmm. so it was very quick. It was very soon after I started YouTube that I, that I created that. And I honestly just did it because I wanted to do something that I hadn't seen really on YouTube at that point, which was at the yeah. time it was like having combining two expansions into one LP wasn't really a thing. Like we had Generations LPs, we had Seasons LPs, but we didn't have like yeah. a combination So I decided, I'm like, maybe this will stand out. I don't know. But I didn't really think it would or expect it to or expect a ton of growth at all from it. I just kind of decided to make it and try it and see what happened. And it just became something I don't, I still don't understand. (laughs) Still don't. (laughs) It's become a staple. I still don't understand. And I'll, you know, and I still have people like come into to chat and they're like, oh my gosh, you do Twitch now? I, you you were my childhood. And I'm like me, like, you know, it's weird to think of my let's play as something that impacted anybody that much. (laughs) Cause it's something I, I don't know. It's just Mm -hmm. a weird thing to think about, but I never expected it to become what it was 
And yeah, I, I, I'm so thankful and grateful for it. But I, I also at the same time, it added so much pressure because I was like, oh, now I need to make sure this is actually like really good. And I need to make sure yeah. that the chaos keeps happening because that's what people like about this family is they're very chaotic and there are a lot. And so I'm like, oh gosh, how am I going to make this entertaining? So I, I got a lot. That's when I started getting a lot more into like being very conscious about what I was doing with my editing or my, or like where my stories were going to try to keep it entertaining. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I never expected and never expected it to turn the way, the way that it did ever for <laughs> sure. Uh, oh man. I feel like 2013 was like the best year for like Sims YouTubers where it was like, for me, for like what I watched was like you, James, Deli, Jen, Jessica, uh, Sim, Sweetie, uh, Life Simmer. Like yes. it was like that, gr like your group, that group of people were like the OGs in my, <laughs> in my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's, it's like a, a surreal moment of like, wow, they were literally my childhood, but we're all literally the same age or like in the same age group. So it's weird, but. I'm only, I think, a few years, like it's a few like, years older than you, but it's just, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's just so wild to me. And like, I was 21 when I started my channel, and it's so weird to mm -hmm. think I'm literally going to be 29. Like, what? Like that is just whoa. <laughs> um, time flies. Yeah. But and like, I think at the time I was 21, and there were a lot of like kids who probably shouldn't have been watching my let's plays because oh, they were pretty like. Yeah. <laughs> They were something, but now they're all those people that watched are grown up, and so now they're all like college kids. So most of my community is like people in college who are like, you know, living their lives as like young adults. And now I'm like in my yeah. late twenties. It's just time has passed so much, but like I'm so grateful that people that that people have stuck with me for seven years and like literally grew up watching me and still continue to watch me even though I'm on Twitch yeah. now, like that's, that means so much to me. Like it's, I never expected it ever. <laughs> Life changing. Like, would you like, like, do you miss the Logan family? Like, do you still have that safe? I do. Aisle? I actually just recently started playing it on stream again. And so uh, I've been playing, how did I miss yeah, it? I've been playing the Logans on stream for like probably a couple of weeks. So I, I just recently started playing them again. And, um, that okay. was like a goal, like a stream goal that we reached was to play the Logans on, from like again and it's become like a pretty normal uh, thing like either every like every other week or so playing them and it's it's been it's been a lot of fun to revisit that family and now like if you remember if you remember talia and alex like if you remember from the first yeah. season like they're elders now and oh my I know gosh. and they have like five kids and it's it's a whole big thing but I I love playing them and it's so fun to see how much the chat still loves them and just how much the community still when like when they think of me they think of the Logan family <laughs> like there's the, the, yeah that's what <laughs> my brain thinks I'm like Logan yeah. Starwing C <laughs> I know they, they just really pair me with the Logan like and I I never ever feel bad about that if anything I'm like happy that this random sim family I made became something so extra that I never thought I never thought it would so it makes me yeah. it makes me happy more than anything to like to have that like connotation. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the last episode you uploaded was like a year ago, I yeah. think, and it was like titled like "New Girl" with season two, episode thirty eight. I'm like, who is this new girl? Like, what is what's going on? I need to learn more yeah. about it. Um, but it's it's very interesting because like it was like fifty episodes for like one season and thirty eight for like season mm -hmm. two. I don't know, it's like become like a, a whole like TV show where you create a story and then you kind of carry it on for like multiple like episodes or like multiple seasons for like years and years. And it's like people come like become attached to those characters like they're real, but you've built them from the ground up and they're still around. And it feels great to know that you still have them because... <laughs> I can oh, never I love like that I, family so oh, much. Yeah, I'm so sentimental with my family, especially my let's play. I have every, I think 
I still have my Island Paradise family. I still have like all of my Sims 3 families because they're just, oh my. They, yeah, they just mean so much. Like all of my Let's Play family, because like they're just, there's so many memories there from making the Let's Play and I just can't bring myself to like let them go just in case I did want to revisit oh, yeah. them. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, I I don't know. It's just, it's so fun to see that people still have a reaction. Because like I went through kind of like how I mentioned before with like, my mental health and feeling like, oh, I don't really want to upload anymore. And, you know, YouTube's analytics punching me in the face. (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But I still can play them on stream and people will still come and hang out. And I don't know. It's just a fun, it's a fun time. It always is. And I just, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I never expected it. And I think... I don't know. There's something about that. Like, I really like I like I barely I almost didn't upload my very first video. So it was a lot. And I was so grateful to have that growth. But then, like I said, it also added the pressure. And then yeah. it, it made me like when I really started to second guess myself. And that's when I kind of stopped uploading. And that's why the last part is like from a year ago from season two of Generations. So, you know, it has been so long. And I started to feel like kind of this washed up, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Cause like, I, I no. feel like I did experience success. Cause like, which I'm very grateful for. And like that my, that, you know, the channel grew the, the way it did. But then I also feel like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, how can I ever keep living up to what this was? And like, how can I get it back? And yeah. how can I make it happen all the time? And it became very unhealthy, like a very unhealthy mindset for me. So that's kind of why I took a step back from YouTube mainly. But now that time has passed, it's been like a couple years since I really felt that way. And now that I'm more focused on Twitch, I feel comfortable bringing them back because I do love the Logans. But I also think for a time, I almost I want to say I resented them because that sounds harsh. That <laughs> sounds really harsh. But but it, it, there was a point where I couldn't upload anything without people asking, where's the Logans though? And as much as I love Mm-hmm. I love, you know, how much people love that family. Like, tr- like I'm so grateful for that. But I also, there was just so much pressure to only do that Let's Play and play that family and keep it entertaining. And it just yeah. got to be a little bit too much. And so taking a step away from them for like a year or so was actually really good. And now I love this family even more than I think I did before. It's like that love ha- for that family has been renewed for me playing it on stream. And I'm really excited to like get back into playing them and see where their stories go. And like, uh, like I, I've made like neighbors to meet the one of the youngest like Sims in the Logan family now. And I'm going to continue on with her. Yeah. And I have all these plans for where she's going to go. And it's just been totally renewed. Aww. And I'm I'm excited about it. <laughs> That's adorable. I'm just so excited. <laughs> oh, it, it's like, for me, I consider you like an OG Sims YouTuber, like kind of started the Sims YouTube era for a lot of people. I would say like making Let's Plays and commentary and making videos and interacting with people, making these like very intricate stories for your Sims and kind of like evolving over time where you are like the godmother, or like the mother of the Sims the gr- community. The, gr- like the, YouTube. Ma, the grandma of the Sims <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that that's amazing I I, I really I it's like yeah. I don't think of myself because it's hard to see yourself the way that other people see you yeah so I it's for me it's just kind of like wild to think about that you know like you put my name next to like Life Simmer or Urban Sims or whoever you know whoever and it's hard for me to see myself on that level or to that extent mm-hmm. but it means a lot I'm really I don't know that really yeah. touched my heart <laughs> but you know what's weird though mm-hmm. like back then i feel like people always thought that everyone sounded the same oh yeah i got a lot like, i got a lot of comments that i sounded like like jen like urban sims and i don't hear I got it. that comment too i'm like oh uh, <laughs> no i don't, <laughs> don't hear it <laughs> well i think when i get excited i sometimes talk in like a new england accent so i think that might be why like like there are a lot of yeah. times I'm playing my Uberhood and there's a family called the Rutherfords, but mm-hmm. my New Englander comes out when I say it and I'm like Rutherford, Rutherford, 
And I think that might be where it comes <laughs> from because like sometimes she has kind of an accent too. Sometimes I have an accent. So maybe that's where that comes from. But I like, yeah, I was always like compared to different people. And I was like, I don't hear it. I don't, I don't know. I, I Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that also kind of added to, for at least for for like me, I guess, the the added pressure of like you sound like this person, like you're com- like people yeah. or like viewers that weren't either like subscribed or were subscribed would compare you to other people. I'm like, mm. I don't like that. I'm my own person, so it kind of it made you, I guess, for me, it made me kind of like wanting to not diversify my diversify my content, but like make my content different from others. Mm-hmm at least try to where I'm like, I'm my own separate person, but I may, I still make the same content as other people you might watch. I don't yeah. Know. Like I remember it was just definitely a weird time. Like when I started generations, I remember like it was fairly early on back when that first started like growing and stuff. And I got a lot of comments that were like, you remind me so much of life simmer. And that's such a compliment. Like, huh. that, like that's such a compliment. Yeah. I get it. But I'm also like, oh, 100%. no, like there is no other life simmer. Like she is queen, you know? And I'm like, I, I'm like, she is yeah. like, she is life simmer. You can't, I, I'm not like, you know? And so it was kind of like, oh no, how can I ever live up to someone like that? Like, I don't know. And so, <laughs> which I love, I love Christina, but like, that's how, like, how I kind of felt. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, how am I going to live up to this person or, and that, and it, that happened a lot. And then I think in 2017 was when Parenthood came out for The Sims 4. And yeah. my channel kind of had, I guess, a new surge of growth. And so I, yeah, and I don't, I don't even know why, but, <laughs> but it did. And I got really overwhelmed because, because there was a lot of like, hate comments and comments that accused me of copying someone else's let's play of it and like it was it was like every comment on the video was how I copied this other person and I didn't even see that other person's videos on it so it literally yeah. couldn't have been copied <laughs> so sometimes I, like I love the sims community but there are times where like certain certain ones like especially on YouTube and stuff will like start to cause like point out things that aren't there you know yeah. you're copying this person well no i literally couldn't because i didn't see it or you know you're just like this person yeah. well that puts pressure on me now and you know people just really like to like just assume so many things about you <laughs> based on based on your content yeah, and it's like and it, it's we're all doing a let's play on one specific sims game pack so it's like of course it's gonna be fairly similar like it's the same game like there's only so many different like when you're reviewing a pack it's only it's it's going to be pretty similar to other people i think that's important to remember is even though i try to make things my own like it's bound to have similarities to someone else's without me even realizing it like the because the sims youtuber community is so broad like how do you how do you constantly do something different all the time you know how do you keep yourself from having the same content as someone else, even even if you're not consciously doing it, like even if you didn't watch someone's content, your content might be similar just because mm-hmm. it's the same exact pack you're reviewing. You know what I mean? Like right. <laughs> there's only yeah. so, so different that it could possibly be. And so, yeah, that definitely stressed me out at the time too, is, is like the comparisons. And it's like, I didn't really even compare myself to others until, until other people did. <laughs> If that makes sense. Yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it does. It's it's hard, definitely, because it was like, I would think just for The Sims in general, because it's lasted for so long, for like 21 years, that people have changed, grew, made new content. But it's like, whereas I feel like, I think just The Sims alone, and maybe Minecraft too, I don't know. But it's like, when you make a certain type of content, it's like, it's all the same. It's all people uh. see. It's all the same. You aren't different. You're just that person. And it's kind of, it's hard to get out of that box. So you have to constantly like reinvent yourself, yeah. you know, cancel series or like start I new ones. I have so many. I have so many. Oh my gosh. Ideas. I feel like my YouTube channel is just like a graveyard of Sims 4 Let's Plays that never saw closure. <laughs> like it's just, it's okay, literally, and, and it's like mostly because I just got burnt out or got bored and just didn't feel like <laughs> Couldn't be bothered to try to finish it, but it, and it's, and then I get embarrassed because I'm like, oh gosh, if you go to my channel, all you see is all these unfinished 
Let's Plays. Like, I think I have maybe three or four or five finished Let's Plays out of like 20, you know? <laughs> like, so I'm like, oh gosh, it's like, <laughs> so it looks so bad. But, but I do think reinventing yourself is important no matter what kind of thing you do. Like, like if you think of musicians, a lot of them reinvent themselves to try to stay relevant. And that's kind of how I feel like content creation can be. It's just a constant, how do I stay relevant? <laughs> Or how do I get relevant again? And and it's constantly changing, just like the music industry is always changing. I think content creation, YouTube is so different now than it was when I started. And that's why oh, it definitely I is. think I also kind of struggle because it was, you know, in 2014, you could just record yourself without face cam, just playing a game. Mm-hmm. And it was enough. It was enough to entertain so many people and grow a channel. And now... And back then you could do like 30, 40 minute parts and stuff. And now it seems like the 12 minute mod reviews or like something really quick and snappy is, is what does the best. And so it's just constantly changing. And I think it can be hard to try to constantly roll with the punches and know exactly what you're doing. It's a lot of trial and error. And, Mm -hmm. and that's another reason why I like Twitch because it, it, at least it doesn't seem like it has to be such a guessing game for me of like, oh, well, I mean, I mean, you still don't know if certain games and certain things will do as well. But yeah, but I feel like if people are on Twitch to sit and watch you for a few hours, then that's that's like consistent. Like they're always going to be there to watch whatever you're doing, however long you do it. It doesn't really matter yeah. what you're doing as much, you know, at least in my opinion, whereas YouTube, it's just so, you know, in like editing I never edited my videos. Oh, my. (laughs) Like, okay, so I edited my videos in like 2014, like when I started, like, but it was literally just. Okay. It was literally just like pasting clips together. Like it wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. But but now I feel like I almost have to spend eight hours a day editing a video just to make it one short because I ramble and (laughs) and two keep it entertaining. like. Like, you know how you just watch a video and you can tell how much work went into the editing. And I feel like those videos do so well because because they're keeping it entertaining with what they're adding, adding into the editing, whether they're even like the two seconds where their voice is a higher pitch or or they put a funny filter on their face for a couple seconds like that takes time. And it's just time I don't have anymore. (laughs) And I can't. You know, and so it's so yeah. And whereas Twitch, it's like you just you know get on your computer, it's put on fine. your camera, and talk, and it's it's pretty you know it's pretty simple. And so that's a big yeah. reason why I've also been getting into more into Twitch because the editing with YouTube is like I feel like I need to to spend a lot of time editing, or I just don't have time. Yeah, it's it's hard to to keep going and reinventing yourself over and over for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it is definitely hard. I mean, <laughs> I spend a lot of time editing, but then I, I was like, I'm to the point where I'm like, I can't edit everything. So I'm like, I'm just going to hire somebody right. to edit my yeah. videos for me. <laughs> so I'm like, you go edit videos and you, you can upload them. And I just add the description and thumbnail. Yeah. But I still enjoy like the editing process and I still do like a few here and there. Like there are times where I would record for a whole like hour and a half and then I have to cut out so much to make it like a, I don't know, like a 10 minute, 12 minute yeah. video just to get like the ads in. Because nowadays, like with, with YouTube, you can have an eight minute video and still have ads. Like you can add like pre mid roll ads in there if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Before it was like 10, but now it's like eight and 10. So I was like, I want to have like at least a 12 minute video or 15 minute video. It's like, it's that long, but it's also like, not short, but it's like in the in between. Right. So I'm like, oh gosh, editing's yeah. fun, but it's so and stressful. Like I would record, and I mean, and depending on your technical difficulties, or if you just don't like, oh, if you just yeah. don't like how the recording came out, or you feel like it's boring, nothing really happened, you want to like record it again. Oh my gosh, it could take anywhere from thirty minutes to like two or three hours, <laughs> depending on depending on yeah. everything. And then the editing is like takes forever especially if you want to try to keep it like cut down and short and cut out i cut out all my ums and like like, oh oh, yeah yeah. i got very like i cut out like every little thing that i thought was like not good i don't know i got very obsessed over my editing and (laughs) and it's like i would cut out 
everything. Yeah, like I'm like I don't have the time. Like I, I, I don't. And you know, and it's like I am a mom, so it's like I want to spend time with my kid and my family. And and yeah. for me, it, Twitch is just easier for me to balance right now with all of that, and also kind of being like like a stay at home mom. And this year, this past year, almost like homeschooling my kid like being a teacher too so it's like I have less time than ever before and so sitting down by the time at the end of the day I'm just too tired to try to record a video and spend my whole day editing it like my time is just very different from how I started and I look back and are you ever jealous of your past self oh 100 (laughs) percent I I look I, I swear I look back and I'm like How was I 21 with a one-year-old baby and recording like 12 videos a week? How, how did that, how did that happen? (laughs) Like I, and I was a college student. I'm like, how did I do all of that? Like how, how? Oh my gosh. And now I can barely like (laughs) stream for a couple hours, like a week. And I'm like, man, I'm tired. And I'm just like, man, I I wish I had that same like motivation or energy, but like, his times just change and it it doesn't mean that you're worse now than you were then it's just you have different responsibilities and different different things happening so yeah but I think about that too I'm like comparison to other people is bound to happen sometimes but like I compare myself to myself a lot (laughs) to my past self and uh, I don't know how healthy that is but (laughs) I always am it's mostly unhealthy for me because I don't know how in the world, because when I first started like my Spring Sims channel, I had two jobs, going to school part time. And then I was also recording videos every single day. I was uploading every single day, sometimes twice a day. And then a year afterwards, 2015, I started like kind of streaming here and there. And then I think I think it was when I got a, got got more into like YouTube and uploading even more. I still had like two jobs. Then I tackled on another job at school and I went to school full time. Uh-huh. And then 2017, I started streaming. So that was like an extra added thing. Granted, back like 2017, I wasn't like uploading as often. I was uploading like every other day and I still do that now. But it's like a whole other ballpark. And I was traveling and then I was getting bigger on YouTube and people were knowing who I was and had all these like, different EA things. It, it was just a very weird time of like handling all of that. I don't know how I managed having two jobs, going to school full time, tackling YouTube and Twitch and then other projects at the same time while still trying to manage a like somewhat B average GPA. Yeah, I, I mean, I, was I honestly mind. have always looked at you as like the one who has it all together. Like, I don't know how, like I I have, I'm like, how does he do it? Like, I really, I'm like, and like, I say that from a very like admiring place. Like I would look at you and I'm like, how does he like, and even now I still, I still see you that way. I'm like, you have this podcast and you have Twitch and YouTube and you have, you know, you do your graphic art and you are doing school and you have your job. Like you just are always doing so much. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, how, how I can barely handle one thing. Like, it's just, and the thing I've learned, I don't the even thing know. I've learned over the years too, is I've learned a lot about my mental health and the, like, everybody's different. And like, yeah. and I think we all have, I don't know if you've heard of like the spoon theory of like your mental health. Mm-mm. It's like, we all have a certain amount of spoons that we can use in a day before they need to be washed and, and like, repair or whatever you want to say. Like, basically I have like (laughs) three spoons (laughs) and one of them is taking a shower. (laughs) Second one is helping my kid with schoolwork. And the third one is streaming. So it's, and that's kind of like your energy level is how I see my spoons. (laughs) And so it's like, after that, I need to wash them. And that's like, cause I have no more energy to give. I have no more, I have no, no more to give after that. And even though like in that might someone else might have, you know, 10 spoons, they might have 10 more different like energy sources than me. And they they might be able to do all of that and more. And that's okay. Like we're all different and we all have different things going on and we can all handle different amounts and that that's okay. You know, and yeah, and trying not to like force yourself to do too much is what I've really been focusing on and not feeling like I need to do it all all the time because 
I just can't. <laughs> I just can't personally. Yeah. It got to be too much for we're... me. And so that's where that spoon theory comes from. And it, and it's kind of interesting. So it's like, after you use so much energy, you need to replenish it. You need to relax. You need to let yourself get that energy back. So give yourself resting days and give yourself, you know, don't take on more than you need. Wash your spoons, you know, <laughs> like you don't need to constantly try to yeah. find more spoons. Like just wash the ones you got, like, and just until you're rejuvenated basically and then you're going to be able to give more when you're not complete you know it's like giving from an empty cup you know so Mm -hmm. that's kind of what i've developed over the years that's helped me a lot (laughs) that's good that's i like that spoon thread i just looked it up like oh my gosh it all makes sense yeah you can look it up and there's like all kinds of like facts and stuff about the the theory but it just i really it it makes sense (laughs) it really does Oh my gosh. It, it's it's definitely very interesting because like with it's like YouTubers who are who are parents and like are married, I'm like, how do you manage all those? Like that's two relationships, a child and then a marriage. I'm like, how what? Yeah. <laughs> how did you like how do they manage all of that? It makes no sense to me because nor I don't have a child nor I am married. But it's like I say true MVPs because you have to manage taking care of a, a full-grown child, feed them, wash them, bathe them, all that other stuff, school, and then the whole marriage part, maintaining that, and then, you know, making sure all things are good with, you know, you and your significant other. And it, it's just definitely a, a lot to handle. But I say you MVP. Oh. You, had a, you have a child. Thank you. Six-year-old child, almost like seven He's years eight. old, married. Yes. Eight. Can you believe? Oh He's going to be in God. the third grade in the fall. I feel I, old. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. Just wait until he, he hits uh, double digits, 10 years oh, old. He's going to like, I'm the top of the world. I'm the best of the best. That's how I was though when I was That's 10. how he is now. He's, he's. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> he's definitely has a big personality for sure. <laughs> but yeah, like he's eight. I can't believe I have an eight year old. Like I, time, what is time? Oh gosh. Time flies. <laughs> Just be prepared for driving. Oh, no. I'm scared of that. I, um, I can't even have my husband drive because I'm so anxious. And I feel like he's, I feel like also <laughs> feel like he's a really bad driver. Like, oh my no offense to him. He can probably hear me right now. <laughs> but I, I just, I just, I, I, I'm that person that if I'm in a car with someone, I need to be driving because, and it's not that I think I'm such a better driver. Oh. It's just, I like being in control of the vehicle and it gives me so much anxiety mm-hmm. when someone else is driving. So I don't know who's going to teach our kid to drive. It probably shouldn't be me because I feel like I'm just going <laughs> to give him more anxiety <laughs> than he needs. <laughs> do you ever feel like when you're driving, do you feel like you're just flying or, or like you're just floating? Like you go to the store and then you're driving home and you get home and you're like, did I drive somewhere? Because like when I drive, I feel like I'm driving. I know I'm driving, but I feel like I'm just floating through everything that yeah. I didn't even drive It's like driving has become so second it's, nature it's that it's just kind of like an extension of your legs and it's just like you just go there and then you come back. It's like <laughs> I, get, I get what you mean for sure because like I'll be driving and I'll just listen to music or whatever and it's like I'm paying attention while I'm driving but I'm also in like this <laughs> like not dream state but I, I'm Weird very I kind of like do kind of space out a bit and then before I know it I'm home and yeah. it's like yeah, it's like, wait, did I go somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the one thing I hate about driving, though, is like, I don't want to pay for insurance oh, or gosh, gas yeah. or drive at all because I don't like driving it a is. lot. And, like, luckily, <laughs> I don't, luckily, have, I don't have to drive too far. Like, my mom lives like 20 minutes away from us and my husband lives like 10 minutes from work. So it's like we don't have to travel too far. But, but yeah, I definitely like the really long car rides i'm like Ugh. <laughs> yeah those long car rides make me happy because i can fall asleep when right. i'm not driving <laughs> so we have come towards the end of the podcast time and time flies I oh my gosh wanted to wrap up with uh <laughs> i talk a lot yeah almost like two oh my hours gosh. long <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> uh, oh it's fine i could talk for days let me tell you a lot. Too, especially when we got into Sims 2. I think that's what did it. it was, yeah. We really talked about the Sims 2 for like an hour. Oh. But I want to ask you some rapid fire questions because I find those really oh. fun. But they're never rapid fire because they're like elongated questions. But the first question, though, I wanted to ask you, 
What's your favorite music group that you've been listening to at the moment? My favorite or, group? Or just music in general. Music in general. Artists. Okay, well, the yeah. newest the newest album I listened to was Sour by Olivia Rodrigo. <gasps> I need to watch so it. Good. I need to listen to that one. Yeah. So good. Um, hope you're hope you're okay is like my favorite from her album. Oh my gosh, so okay. good. Um, Trader is so good. They're, they're all they're all really good. And then for a group, I'm really into the band Camino. I don't know if you've heard of them, but Mm-mm. um, I really like their sound. It's like alternative meets pop, and, and I just mm. I really like it. So yeah, those are probably who I listen to the most. And of course, Taylor Swift. Like I'm, yeah. I'm a big Swifty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Olivia Rodrigo has reinvented herself very quickly. When you think about it, like the whole Disney, I could talk about this on a whole other episode. But like when you think about it, Disney has reinvented themselves so many times, especially like when Hannah Montana, That's a Raven, Sweet Life and all those other like TV shows came around. And then for years and then they end after like a certain like amount of like years or seasons. And then you hear something crazy happening. Like, for example, I know she's doing fine right now, but Miley Cyrus. That yeah. was just like, what? <laughs> she goes from Hannah Montana to um, Banger and then Liam Hensworth marriage and then not anymore. And then all these ever di- different other things. But she's she's still a great person doing amazing things, but she's like whole 360 reinventing yeah, herself. Yeah, and I think, but- I think that they probably feel the pressure from like being seen as like these perfect yeah. Disney from a young age. I mean, they were like, what, 14 when they start these shows. So it's like, yeah. so from being such a young age to go through all of that and be put on a pedestal from the time you're like a child and have to be seen as perfect mm-hmm. when there is no such thing as perfect and you're bound to make mistakes and ima- everybody makes mistakes and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so true. And it's, it's, you know, and she has a song called Nobody's Perfect, but still Disney yeah. and everybody expected her to be perfect. So yeah. I feel like that would add a lot of pressure. So I think it's almost like a rebelling thing. Like once you're out of that contract and you can do mm-hmm. what you want, it's like, all right, I'm going to go hard in the opposite direction just to exactly. prove that I'm not that person. And, you know, people are going to judge me anyway. So I might as well just do whatever I want. And I think that's where that kind of comes from. So even though that yeah. wasn't my favorite Miley era, I mm. still, I can respect it and see where yeah. she came from. <laughs> Cause like you start, you have a, a famous dad, first of all, yeah. Billy Ray, and then having to kind of, I guess not really live up, but like have, I don't know, something to like, be overall like you're expected to be like your dad or like be, there's a connotation like, there's like a yeah, yeah. There's like they expect you to live be up to it. like you're and you're automatically in the spotlight if your parents are famous so it's like exactly oh. it's like mm-mm. child star no thank you not for me no no, no thank you no. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question do you have any recommendations for anyone for like books podcasts tv shows etc tv shows the handmaid's tale oh uh, my god it's so good this season (gasps) you haven't seen it i need to watch it i've only seen episode one season one (laughs) oh my gosh yes they're on season four now (laughs) and i swear it's the best season they've had so far there's so much happening and it's actually like it's like the whole show has been a fuse burning and now it's like exploding (laughs) so it's like very exciting i'm very into that right now as well as there's a there's a show that actually just ended like they have their series finale and they're called Superstore. Have you seen it? Oh, it's funny. I've heard of it. Oh, it's like a, if you want like a funny show about like people who work retail and you can relate to that and you want it like it's so funny. Like it's so good. So those are probably my two favorite favorite ones. Um, I also got very into Bridgerton on Netflix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, for reasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For some reasons. Uh, but yeah, that's I like that too. <laughs> yeah. Those are some good ones. Yeah. I need to get back into Bridgerton though. It's been a minute. Oh, oh yo, you God. haven't finished it? No. Mm. I'm very slow. Yeah. I've been watching Grey's Anatomy lately and Station 19. And uh, see, shows. I started that and then I think I got into like the... F- Six. I, don't, I got pretty far into it, but then I found out my favorite character died. So I was like, you know what? I'm not watching this anymore. They're up to season 17. They just got renewed That's for ridiculous. season 18. That it's is been, wild. It's been going on since 2005. Um, they need to slow their roll. <laughs> like, calm yeah, down. That's, 
That's almost as old as The Sims 2. That's a lot. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, it's so weird because, like, when they started, like, introducing, like, Twitter and, you know, all these other social medias, I started laughing because, like, oh, my gosh, they don't know. It's so weird. My space. Mm, weird times. Uh, my space. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Um, But the next question is, what advice would you give to someone, whether it was like your younger self or somebody in general who are who is wanting to get into like the quote unquote internet gaming space of like either YouTube or like streaming on Twitch? Like what advice would you give to like your younger self or somebody else? Well, okay, so I think what I would say, and it's very much easier said than done. And it sounds like such a cop out, but it really it really is important to go into it without any expectations. Mm -hmm. And I say that like, because especially if you're just coming, cause like I came from YouTube onto Twitch. So my community I had already built and they followed me to Twitch. So I didn't have to start from the ground up on Twitch, which was nice. (laughs) Um, so, but so I would say if someone's just starting out, like the community that you are meant to develop will come to you. So, and I say that because I feel like, especially if you're going into it from the point of view is I want to make a lot of friends and I want to meet a lot of people and I want to build a community. Like, yes, that is a good outlook to have on it. That's like the most important part of Twitch and I, you know, building a community, but you're not going to get like a hundred people overnight kind of thing. Like it's going to definitely take a while, but trust the process and keep doing what you're doing and talk As if people are there. I don't care if there is nobody there. Keep talking as if you are. Because that one, you know, that 10 minute increment of time where you're just kind of not talking because no one's in chat. People could have popped in and thought, oh, they're not really talking or engaging with anything. So I think I'm not going to stay. So I think constantly talk as if and I think recording starting out recording Let's Plays helped me a lot. So even if you want to record videos to practice your commentary and practice your constant talking, you don't need to upload your videos if you don't want to. But just to even get comfortable talking in front of a microphone is a process. So I think definitely doing that helps. It, It helps you practice. It's like you know how Sims will practice their charisma in the mirror? It's kind of the same vibe. It's kind of like Pretty much. kind of the same thing. You record yourself and then you can review how you sounded. And I don't know. I just think that could be really helpful if you're not comfortable talking in long increments because that's a big part of streaming. And yeah, yeah talk like a talk like hundred people are always there is my biggest thing. But and then also not going into it, expecting to get it quickly and also expecting the, like going into it for monetary purposes mm-hmm. because that is just gonna <laughs> trap you instantly like you know you're gonna get in the habit of checking your analytics I think everybody does and I've been trying to make a conscious effort not to and just not check that stuff and it's hard it's hard especially when it becomes such a normal thing wanting to know like I'm very curious and I want to know how much I've how many people were there Mm-hmm. But I think if you obsess too much over like, oh, I made more this month than I did last month, or I just really want to make money. And like, especially with Twitch there and like, well, I think YouTube too, their partner program. I don't, oh, I, I was partner partnered a long time. I don't remember. I don't know what it's like now, but I know it's harder to get yeah. partnered on YouTube. But and like and with Twitch, you need at least like, I think uh, you need to make at least like a hundred dollars a month to even get paid. Yeah. So, and that's going to take a long time. So don't don't harp so much on affiliate cuz it's still like even after you make affiliate it's going to take a while to get them. So don't oh, yeah. go into it with the mindset of money money and and you know, if it happens great, but don't let that be your sole motivation. Let your sole motivation be fostering a community and interacting and connecting with people. 100% and having agree. fun and I think you'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. Like a lot, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's a really good one. Like, honestly, like YouTube and Twitch are the same thresholds, like a hundred dollars. YouTube is weird. Like, you need a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours in order to be like monetized, and it's so hard. And AdSense on YouTube is trash, first of all. Uh, But you would think YouTube would have like like, a Twitch thing where for smaller creators, like, do you know what I mean? Because I feel like that's a lot. Or even like like a small channel to reach. Like I feel like I feel like they should have a smaller. You know how with like Twitch affiliates versus partners. Yeah. Like you know 
Twitch partners, there's like a lot more goals to reach. And but with Twitch affiliates, it's like an average of three viewers and 50 followers. And it's it's and boom. a little easier to obtain. Right. And so I think they should do that with YouTube. I think YouTube would be really wise and probably make more money if they yeah. had a smaller partner program as well. Like they could do like limited ads, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, like like they could do something with it or like give the big YouTube partners emotes if they don't already have. I don't know if they have emotes and all that kind of stuff. But, oh, they do. Um, but they could do they have plenty of things they could do for like a smaller um, partner program. Yeah, I think they should sure. anyway. <laughs> I think they should, too. Like YouTube step up, please. Yes. <laughs> chop, chop. Um, <laughs> Take notes. <laughs> so <laughs> what's been your favorite game you've been playing so far? Like of all time? Well, just like. This year, I guess. Okay. Um, well, I did finish a trip become human this year, so which we talked about, which I definitely loved so much. I also played Little Hope, which is a horror game, because we do half a ween on streams. So like oh, every yeah. end of April of the year, we'll we'll do Halloween, we'll have scare alerts and stuff and play a scary game. So we played Little Hope and I literally screamed and it was oh it was so much fun though. But that was that was a pretty good game, I think. Um and yeah, there's a lot of others I want to play, like Life is Strange and mm-hmm. and stuff that I want to get into. But and then of course we know The Sims Two is always the best. My favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, always. Have you played a game called YouTuber's Life? I have not. Oh I have my. not. I saw I saw you streaming it. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was. It's um yeah. it's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> what you, is it you just have to like be a youtuber it's like a youtuber simulator or something literally you you are at your parents <laughs> house it's you start with like your mom's house you have oh, wow. terrible upload speed you have a, Me. a crappy computer <laughs> and you're in school and trying to make videos at the same time your mom nags at you if you don't study enough you lose your computer if you get a failed grade <laughs> it's like crazy. that sounds really fun Oh, it's so much, it's literally so much fun because if you love the whole like YouTube mindset and like making videos or just having like an idea of like what it's, I guess, quote unquote, like being a YouTuber, but in a simulation game. I think I would like that because even in The Sims 4, yeah, I kind of like, I like the whole like streamer, yeah. YouTube influencer thing with Get Famous. I kind of like yeah. that whole thing. So I think I would might like this. <laughs> yeah. It's on Steam. It's like, it's $25. It's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. They're coming out mm-hmm. with a second one, though. I'm not sure when, but it said this year, but I'm not really sure the exact date. They should have, date. like, Twitch streamer life. <laughs> There's actually a, a video game called Streamer Life. Oh, there is? Oh, wow. Okay. But it's so awful, though. I have it, and I didn't like it <laughs> at all. Oh, no. It's very weird looking, too, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> YouTuber's Life is a lot better. It's, like, more, I think, it looks more kid-friendly, and I like that. Oh, I was also going to say, like, this was almost two hours long, but I was going to say, like, um... That it's weird because with YouTube way, way back then, it's like you had to be family friendly the entire time. You couldn't cuss, yeah. you couldn't do any of that stuff. And it was like, oh gosh, we're in a box already. Especially again. now with every, all those things you had to sign recently with like being YouTuber, like you had to base, you have to confirm if your content is kid friendly or not. And like, yeah, or you don't get any like, ads. Yeah, so, you don't get ads. So it's like so you like, kind of have to censor yourself a lot. Yeah, so, like, my videos aren't even safe for kids anyway. I mean, it is, but it's not because it's Sims and woohoo and all that jibber-jabber nut right. stuff. Especially in The Sims 2. If you play The Sims 1, that's a, definitely not family-friendly whatsoever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. And, like, the um, older Sims games were a little more risque, so oh, definitely. Yeah. The yeah. cutscenes? I love the cutscenes so much, though. Oh, They're so good. <laughs> it's so wonderful. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but the last question is what you know now, what advice would you give to your younger self? It's a hard one. Probably try not to be a people pleaser because it's impossible. And I mean that because you might make like a hundred people happy, but there will still be a bunch of people who won't like you no matter what you do. Like you could be the humanitarian of the year and they would still find a way, a reason not to like you. So it's like, don't worry so much about being a people pleaser because I I don't know if you've heard of the Enneagram test where like, you get your, I'm a two. So I'm the helper. So I constantly want to help people and fix people's lives and make people like me. And so it's very hard for me to break from that. 
And I think if I like went into any kind of content creation or like even when I was really young in school and stuff and cared so much about what people think, uh, I think if I hadn't cared so much, then I would have been a lot better off and just a happier person Mm -hmm. in myself like I think in the last seven years since I started YouTube I've definitely changed a lot as a person and in like good ways and stuff and I've I've been really trying to work on not being a people pleaser because there will always be someone who doesn't like you and that's a hard pill to swallow for a people pleaser and someone who wants to be liked and seen as good and I think that's important to know is that there will be someone who doesn't like you and that's okay (laughs) yeah. <laughs> and kind of teaching myself how, like, I would have gone back and told myself that, like, it's okay that not everyone likes you. I promise. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, like, and more people will like you than not. Like, and so, like, the right people, like, focus on the people in your corner who are supportive and loving, and don't try so hard to change the opinion of the ones who aren't. Like, don't you know? Don't don't care so much about that. Yeah, if that makes sense. That's probably what I would try to focus on because I care. I still do, but I definitely back then I cared a lot about what, like total strangers, people I didn't even know, like oh, yeah, why, about their opinions on me. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, definitely that's probably what it would be. Well, thank you so much for being on my podcast. I cannot believe, oh, it's been so long. It feels so great to be able to talk about this stuff because not a lot of people talk about stuff at all, especially like what YouTube was back then and what is mm-hmm. is now. But yeah, so... Thank you so much for having me. I loved this. It was so fun. Yeah. So, <laughs> Two hours flew by. I, it's crazy. Oh, <laughs> I, still, I still have to record the intro and outro for this episode and it's going to be like two hours, some minute long. It's going to be oh fun. <laughs> like, but anyway, where can the listeners find you? So you can find me on YouTube at Starwingsy. I don't upload that much anymore, but there's still seven years worth of videos if you ever feel like watching. And I might upload again. I'm mm-hmm. sure probably at some point. <laughs> but mainly finding me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Starwingsy. If you want to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Starwingsy. And basically Starwingsy on everything. So yeah, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. Very good. I'm so yeah. happy. Well, thank you again. I'll let you thank go. You. Appreciate okay. so, so much. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. So I hope you all enjoyed today's episode with Star Winksy. I definitely sure did. Because as a person who is a diehard Sims 2 fan, and the fact that she's a diehard Sims 2 fan, it brings me so much good serotonin to know that I can just scream my passion for the town of Pleasant View and how much drama my game has created because of Don Lothario and how I've kind of navigated that storyline throughout many different Sims like the Calientes, the Goth family, the Broke family, the Dreamer family, all the above and make Pleasant View more chaotic than it is, especially kind of talking about her uberhood and her past life as Starlight Sims on YouTube, but now Star Winksy, uh, what she went through with you know, her YouTube series with The Sims 3 Generations and Seasons, and how she kind of transitioned over from YouTube to Twitch. But make sure you check out all of her links in the show notes below so you can give her a follow, a shout out, and all those cool things. Because if you love The Sims, like The Sims 2 or 3 or story-driven games, I know for a fact you are going to love her vibe, her personality, her stream community. It's just a breath of fresh air to find someone you can listen to or watch and interact with in real time and be a part of a a newfound family that you want to be a part of for a very long time. And I definitely am a part of her community and it brings me so much joy to have her on this podcast. And yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. But either way, make sure you go ahead and follow and subscribe to me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I will hear from you all next week. Bye-bye.